In the previous video, we got introduced to radicals. Now, drawing mechanisms with radicals is a little bit different than the mechanisms that we've been drawing up to this point, so I thought it might be useful to look at a couple examples. In this first example, we want to draw all the resonance structures of the following radical. Now, when we learned about resonance before, there were a number of different patterns that we learned. With radicals, there are a number of different patterns, but by far the most important, and the one uh, that we'll see by far the most often, is when we have our lone pair in an allylic position, right? So it's adjacent to a double bond, right? And so if you remember, when we were looking for whether uh, charges or carbocations were allylic, right? When we start the double bond, if we can go one, two, three, then it's allylic. And so I have an allylic radical here. And so the resonance, uh, to draw the resonance structures, we take our lone pair, sorry, not our lone pair, our unpaired electron, and it moves and it's going to form a double bond here with one of the electrons from the pi bond. And so one of those pi electrons will move in. Uh, and so together, these two single electrons will form the pi bond here. And then the one remaining electron here becomes a radical on that atom. So these always involve three steps. The uh, single electron, the unpaired electron, and one of the electrons from the pi bond will form a new pi bond, and then the remaining electron from the pi bond that wasn't used forms a new radical. And so our first resonance structure will look like this. And now again, I have an allylic unpaired electron. And so again, the pattern is the unpaired electron and one of the electrons from the pi bond will form a new pi bond. And then the remaining electron from the pi bond forms a new radical. And so these are the three resonance structures that we have for this radical. Okay, in the remaining examples, we're going to fill in the curved arrows for a number of different mechanistic steps. And so in this case, I'm adding the bromine atom here. And so in order to form a bond, I need two electrons. And so we're going to take one electron from the bromine radical, one electron from the pi bond, and then the other electron from the pi bond will form a radical here. So we have right, an electron from the pi bond and the bromine are combining to form a new bond. And then the other electron uh, will form the new radical. Okay, here's another example. And I just noticed that there's a typo here. Uh, there should not be uh, the lone electron here. So we just have the one unpaired electron in that case. And so uh, in this case, right, I'm going from bromine to HBr, and so that hydrogen must have come from somewhere, right? And so we took the hydrogen from here, or we took the hydrogen from this position. So I need to draw in that hydrogen to complete this step. Right, so we're forming a new bond between the bromine and the hydrogen. So the one unpaired electron from the bromine will come in with one of the electrons from the CH bond, and then the other electron will form the new radical. Okay, in this case, we have a coupling our two ethyl radicals are going to combine to form butane. So we're forming a new bond between each of those atoms. And so that's what the, the curved arrows would look like in this case. Okay, here we have an example of a homolytic uh, bond cleavage. And uh, you don't have to put this in, but just, just a reminder, this generally is accomplished by uh, heat, or I think even more common than that, 
by using high energy electromagnetic radiation. So we might put an H nu here. Um, and then in this case, right when I break the bond, each of the bromines ends up getting one of the electrons from the bond. Okay, one last example. So I'm splitting this molecule up. And so it looks like right, I've got three carbons in each of my products. So one, two, three, one, two, three. So it looks like I'm splitting it uh, right here. And the species that's going to end up being on the right is going to end up with a double bond, with a pi bond. So I think what we're going to do is take our uh, single electron here. One of the electrons from this bond will make the pi bond. And then the remaining electron from this bond will form uh, the new radical. So our arrows should look something like that.